This is Dr. Weber, the author of uh, Prostate Cancer Commentary, Volume 171. The subject is <clears throat> non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, the IDES of antigen receptor inhibition in zalutamide, apalutamide, and darolutamide. Non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, NMCRPC, is a transient heterogeneous state that progresses to met metastatic disease. NMCRPC is defined as a rising PSA after primary therapy in association with a castrate level of testosterone, that is to say, less than 50 nanograms per DL. While negative for metastases on conventional imaging with CT and conventional technetium bone scans. Quote, among non-metastatic CRPC men, nearly 60% develop metastases during the ensuing five years, with most of the metastases occurring within the first three. This was from Morea et al., Neurology 2016. Factors that suggest a more rapid progression to metastatic state are younger age, higher Gleason score, greater than seven, high prostatic-specific antigen levels, reduced prostate-specific antigen doubling time, such as less than six months, and a rapid alkaline phosphatase ride. This was from Figurito et al., Clinical Drug Investigations 2022. Three major randomized trials addressed this condition, Prosper, Aramis, and Spartan, in which enzalutamide, apalutamide, or darolutamide, respectively, each combined with Lupron, were compared with Lupron alone. In each, the study participants were at high risk for disease progression. They had Gleason scores equal to or greater than eight, with a rapid PSA doubling time of less than 10 months. Metastases-free survival was the chosen endpoint, since it has been validated as a surrogate for overall survival. In each trial, the study drug plus Lupron significantly outperformed Lupron alone. Comparison of the trial results. Understandably, there is a strong interest in identifying the best regimen for treating non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, but there have not been any head-to-head -head comparisons among the drugs to answer that question. The most instructive reviews are Figurito and Katrini. Both analyzed the three landmark trials comparing outcome and safety profiles and suggested features that might assist in individualizing the choice of a drug for a particular patient. This commentary will review Figurito's study. Figurito's triple comparison. The median metastasis-free survival in the Prosper Aramis and Spartan trials were essentially similar, 36.6, 40.4, 40.5 months respectively, in these men who were at high risk for progression, PSA doubling time of less than 10 months and PSA levels of greater than two nanograms per ml. The profiles of adverse effects differ among the three drugs and may serve as the basis for individualized choice. The chemical structure of apalutamide and enzalutamide are nearly identical, which may explain the similarity of side effects between them. Quote, both agents are associated with a higher incidence of falls, fatigue, hypertension, rashes, and seizures compared to ADT and have the potential for pharmacological interaction with other medications, based on Figurito. Darolutamide has a distinctly different 
chemical structure and compared to enzalutamide and apalutamide has only minimal penetration of the blood-brain barrier. This may account for comparatively lesser adverse effects than enzalutamide or apalutamide. Darlutamide showed limited potential for clinically relevant drug interactions. As collated from five references, Dr. David Crawford listed adverse effects of darolutamide, which were comparatively less than the other two drugs. Fatigue, 15.8%, falls, 4.2%, dizziness, 4.5%, seizures, 0.2%, hypertension, 6.6%, diarrhea, 6.9%, and rash, 2.9%. This was from Crawford et al., Cancer Management Research 2020. In short, Figueredo's and Katrini's metal analyses both reported that apalutamide, and to a lesser extent enzalutamide, were more effective than darolutamide. But darolutamide was better tolerated. However, in each, the study drug plus Lupron significantly prolonged metastasis-free survival and overall survival compared to Lupron alone. An important caveat, however, in each of these three trials, the determination of, quote, non-metastatic, unquote, was based on conventional CT and technetium bone scans. Fender et al., Clinical Cancer Research 2019, addressed this issue in, quote, prostate-specific membrane antigen ligand positive emission tomography in men with non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. Their work suggests that because of the insensitivity of conventional imaging to detect small-size metastases, the outcomes of the three trials should be regarded as studies of patients with low burden metastatic disease and not metastasis free. Fendry et al. based this observation on their study of 200 men with non metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. Similar to the men in the major trials, the men in the Fender study also had prosthetic specific antigen greater than two nanograms per ml and high risk for metastatic disease. That is to say, PSA doubling time of less than 10 months and or Gleason score of equal to or greater than eight. Their findings, PSMA PET in 200 patients found metastatic disease in 55% despite negative conventional imaging. The metastatic disease was located in extra pelvic nodes, 39.5%, in bone, 24%, and in visceral organs in 6% of patients. Overall, 44% had disease in the pelvis, including 24% with local prostate bed recurrence. 46% had greater than four metastatic lesions. Treatment of non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. The need for data-driven guidance. Although PSMA PET imaging finds that there is substantial low burden metastatic disease in men assigned with non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer based on conventional imaging, data is lacking, demonstrated that treatment based on PSMA PET imaging prolongs survival. Figueredo, acknowledging this lack, wrote, nevertheless, Considering the lack of clinical trials assessing the prognosis of patients with metastases detected only by PSMA, 
Further investigation is warranted to determine whether the PSMA PET CT should be extensively used in high risk non metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer patients. End of quote. Data is required to establish that early treatment in this PSMA imaged group results in a survival benefit compared to the outcomes reported in the three major trials. Of note, Katrini points out as of 4 2020, neither apalutamide nor darolutamide can be used in metastatic prostate cancer, cancer resistant. And the therapeutic opportunity may be lost in patients who are immediately upstaged from NMCRPC to metastatic. Hussein et al. in the JCO 2022 states that, quote, until data provides better guidance, clinicians should base treatment decisions in men with non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer on the extent of disease seen on conventional imaging. However, it should be noted that if a patient with NMCRPC based on conventional imaging were found to have metastatic cancer on PSNA PET, he would be eligible for Provenge and metastasis directed therapy. Bottom line, Treatment regimens combining enzalutamide, apalutamide, or darolutamide with androgen deprivation have been found equivalent in prolonging metastasis-free and overall survival in men with NMCRPC who are at high risk for recurrence compared to the use of ADT alone. PSMA PET imaging finds that there is substantial low burden metastatic disease found in men assigned NMCRPC based on conventional imaging. More data is needed to incorporate this fact into treatment decisions. <laughs>